The attack, of course, happened before that because um, I set two fastest laps toward the end of the race. So, of course, the, the plan was really to save the tires for the last three laps of the race, which, which worked out, of course, because you could see Sandeli was really pushing too much to stay out of DRS. Um, and, of course, he was starting to make small mistakes just because of the rear tires of him going off. Uh, and then out of turn six, um, he went a little bit wide, had a little bit of an oversteer moment. So, you know, you can you can just smell that there's a bit of a chance coming towards cops. Uh, and I had a good exit just because of my rear tires being much better at that moment. I thought he was going to defend completely to the wall, but he still left the gap open, which was probably not smart from him. But um, <laughs> so going into cops. And you're obviously not on the racing line because you're down the inside. So tell me what that was like and what did the car do into COPS? No, just, I mean, for F3, uh, COPS is, of course, not flat because of the, I mean, we have much less downforce, of course, than F1. And compared to the power we have, um, I mean, the old F3 was easy flat, but this one isn't, of course. Um, but it was just a little lift. I mean, I still didn't break. To be fair, COPS has been one of my strengths last weekend. Um, so I've been quick there the whole weekend, so I knew it was a corner that uh, I felt comfortable with. Uh, so yeah, I still gained quite a bit of exit speed there, and from there on it was just... But did the car do anything funny because you went in on the inside because you were offline? I mean, what? Did, how did you adjust for that? And no, just, just before going into the corner, I, I told myself to be very smooth on the pedals because uh, <laughs> it can be very twitchy if you don't. So uh, yeah, that was that was well planned at least. So then you come out of cops and you've got him, but now, as you say, the issue is the DRS from Beckett's down to Stowe. Yeah, that's 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 a difficult one, especially because the gap is, of course, much much smaller than um, than it was the whole race um, with him leading. So I knew it would be difficult because sometimes I could already place an attack with being at least two tenths uh, further to the back. So I knew I knew I would be in danger by the end of uh, Hanger Straight, but. Uh, yeah, so I defended the inside, but of course Lirium uh, went for the move around the outside, which was quite uh, quite brave, I have to say. Uh, but there was a lot of respect between each other because I know Lirium already since uh, since I'm 12, because we grew up on the pretty much the same karting track. So, <laughs> so we already have a bit of a history together, so uh, it was very fair, uh, the whole fight. Okay, so now keep going. Now you're running down towards the club complex, and what are you thinking? Um, well, I mean, of course, initially you want to break as late as possible and go around the outside. That's that's what you would normally do, of course. But I could already see that he was breaking probably a little bit too late. So, of course, I went for the switchback. And then, of course, he thought I was going for the switchback again. But, uh, no, I went around the outside, of course. But uh, because he wanted to, f to defend the switchback... He, of course, slowed down so much that he left the gap open on the outside. So that was a split-second decision, but uh, <laughs> it worked out well in the end. But when you were running down to club from Stowe, were you thinking, I've lost this? Or were you thinking, I can still win this? No, I, I, to be honest, I wasn't thinking much because I was quite busy. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I mean... F3 is just full of, of, of racing. I mean, the race on Saturday was crazy as well with all the fights. So uh, there have been similar actions, but didn't actually work out the previous day. But I knew there was a chance at least. So at least it was like in the back of my mind. But uh, there wasn't really a, a conscious thought at that moment, to be honest. Well, obviously it's the mutual respect between the two that ensured that you didn't hit one another. But that last acceleration run out of club to the start finish line the checkered flag wow yeah yeah well you can also see on this acceleration that, that we were better on the tire management for sure because because he struggled so much with traction already the last three laps so of course that gives you confidence to make a move like this because you just have extra grip compared to him which is a credit to you because it's not easy to look after your tires if you're running behind another car Especially around Silverstone. No, but I mean, to be fair, it was also very well done by the team because we already calculated this. I mean, it, it, 
would probably not be uh, running first from the start. So, of course, you set the car up to a little bit more oversteer just to avoid uh, getting a lot of understeer in dirty air. So that's well done to the team for that because that, uh, of course, was key to the win by the end of the <laughs> by the end of the lap. But uh, yeah, you still have to manage it. Of course, it's not easy. How does that race? that you drove stack up with any other race you've ever done in your life in karting or any other category? Yeah, funny enough, I mean, in karting, it happened so many times, races like this. So, so the, the first time I crossed the finish line, of course, I didn't really realize what happened. So, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't really... Uh, I, I Of course, I was very happy, but, uh, you know, in, in the heat of the moment, I mean, you're so focused on what you're doing, I didn't quite realize what was going on. But how does it compare to other races? It's it's hard to say. I think, um, from my perspective, the one in Budapest was much more fun. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot more action going on. This was more of a tactical, yeah, almost chess game, if you like. It's uh, just from, from beginning to the end, it just was a bit of a mind game, of course, and uh, tire saving. So tell us a little bit about Ben Piscal. Who are you? Where do you come from? What's life all about? Yeah, uh, well, I come from the Netherlands, of course. I live very, very close to Germany. So uh, my Dutch accent is a little bit funny sometimes. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I love football. I mean, I have a season ticket for my uh, my local team. So uh, that's what I do as a, as a hobby. Uh, Go-karting has been a passion of mine uh, since I was five. It was never actually planned to go into... Uh, motorsport or formula cars but uh, it just went the way it went um so yeah that's that's a small summary of who ben fisco is and your dad was he a racer yeah he used to race super cars, but just more as a as a hobby like i started in cars as well just i mean just for fun just a bit of a father and son thing used to do because of course he was very busy already back then with uh, building the business um uh, so yeah it was just a great way of of spending time with your dad already at the karting track you know sunday mornings there was always this uh this is funny actually so then we also get why my rain pace is quite competitive so we would always race on uh, sunday morning from 8 a.m till 10 a.m on the local track here because that was the time spot allocated for mini cars but it didn't really matter what kind of weather it was and of course the netherlands is just as bad as the uk when it gets to weather uh, so whether it would snow or whether it would be dry, you know, he would always take me to the track. Um, and then the funny thing is the Dutch championship uh, back then didn't allow rain tires. So even though it was soaking wet, we had to drive on slicks. Uh, but I think in the end, uh, you know, it, it, it pays off and makes you a better racing driver. But I mean, I'm just very thankful that he spent the time back then with me just to, uh, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. Ben, can I finally ask what, when it did start to sink in and what it was like last night, Sunday night, and then how you felt this morning and how maybe you feel a different guy after that win? Uh, well, funny enough, not at all. I, I don't really think it has uh, sunk in yet, but uh, this morning I had to leave to the sim already at 5 o'clock, so that's, that's my morning. You know, I, I came home at 12.30 and I left at 5. So... Uh, yeah, it's not really a, a glorious uh, way of celebrating it, but uh, Barcelona is around the corner, so it's uh, it's time to prepare, of course. Well, it's not only around the corner, it's right there, isn't it, Barcelona? No time really to enjoy it, I guess. So tell us about your plans. When are you leaving for Barcelona? And Wednesday already. Uh, we're going by car, because I, I want to avoid uh, airports as much as possible. And, uh, of course, it's a bit of a long trip. It's about uh, 1,000 miles, so... Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Wow. How long is that going to take then? Uh, no, I think it's going to be one day. So I'm driving together with my dad, so uh, I think we're going straight. Wow. What sort of car? It's a camper, you know, just a sort of motorhome. Really? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you know, I, I th we're doing everything we can just to avoid uh, hotels or airplanes or whatever. The Dutch, just that's what they do, isn't it? The camper van, the caravans, that's what you are. Exactly, exactly. You know, we're very Dutch, also with the motorhomes and campers. Watch out for us on the road. <laughs>